Hi guys. So in this lecture, we'll understand what is runtime polymorphism or dynamic polymorphism in C sharp. Now I have already explained you what is compile time polymorphism C sharp in my previous lecture. And the compile time polymorphism is achieved with the help of method overloading. This is also a very common interview question that what is the difference between method overloading or method overriding. So let's quickly jump into our slides and understand what is runtime or dynamic polymorphism in C sharp. So runtime polymorphism is achieved through overriding virtual or abstract methods. Now I have already a lecture recorded on what is overriding. So if you are new to this concept, please go and watch that lecture first. So compiler identifies which polymorphic form to execute at runtime. Hence it is called runtime polymorphism. So in the case of static polymorphism or compile time polymorphism, what happened was our compiler was knowing in the design time itself that which method we are going to call, which overloaded version we are going to call. So that was called as compile time polymorphism. Same concept goes in here in which co compiler identifies which polymorphic form to execute at runtime. Hence it is called runtime polymorphism. Now both of these points will get a uh, bit clear once we go into Visual Studio and understand what do I mean by these points. But before that, let's look into a very practical examples from our real lives. Now, each one of has a variety of phones, right? Cell phones. Some of us might have uh, uh, old phones and some of us might have new phones. Old phones include Nokia, Motorola, etc., which are outdated now nowadays. And new phones include Samsung, iPhone, etc., which many of us use in our daily lives. Now, consider I'm using a Vodafone's carrier. Now, if Vodafone tries to ring our phone or say, suppose we are getting a incoming call in our phone. This Vodafone does not care of type of phone we are using. It just sends us the ringing signal. So if I have a Nokia phone, it will ring. If I have a Samsung phone, it will ring. So Vodafone just knows about the base type of phones and expects any derived instance of that phone to know how to ring. And thus Vodafone is treating our phone as polymorphically. That is my, my new phone, my old phone, my future phone, each and every one will use that ringing function accordingly. So Vodafone does not care how your phone rings or whichever way your phone rings, it just sends the signal for our phone to ring. Thus our phone company treats our phone polymorphically. I hope this makes sense. So now this was a very simple example to understand the first two points. Let's quickly jump into Visual Studio and understand through an example. So in my example, I have a very simple class called as phone. Okay. And all this class has a two uh, fields called as name and price and a method which displays the details of my phone. So the implementation of this method is my phone is uh, then the name what I have passed into the main method and then the price and the price that, that I have passed and all I am doing in the main main method is I am creating the object of this phone and then I am passing Samsung and 10,000 and then I am calling this details method okay let's try to run this program you can see my phone is Samsung and price is 10k so a very simple program now let's make a class which derive, derives from phone class and also mind it that this details method is a virtual method so that in our child class we will override this details method so i have a pre-typed code in here so let me paste that code since this is a very simple code so i'm just pasting it uh, to save some time so i have a class software details which derives from phone class and all this software details class has the android version field okay so this field will describe the android version of my phone okay and then i have the constructor of this software details class which takes three parameters name price and android version now this name and price will come from the parent class okay so i am just assigning those names to or i am assigning this name parameter to name field okay so this is my constructor and now I have a details method which overrides this details method from the base class. And the implementation of this 
details method is same as this details method but only difference being it also has the android version in it okay so you can see same method but different implementation now in similar lines of this software details let me paste a class which describes the hardware details of this phone okay and this is the very similar class to this software details the only difference being this android version is changed with this glass version or the screen version of the phone okay and the details method of this class takes the glass version in here so this is the only difference between software details and hardware details this android version is replaced with glass version okay so this code looks uh, big but this is a very simple code and this is the reason why i am pasting this code because this is a very simple code but it will take time to type this code okay so let's go through the hardware details so it uh, it has a field called glass version same uh, then it has a constructor which takes name price and glass version as parameters and this name and price will come from the base class of phone okay and then i am assigning this name parameter to this name field price parameter to price field and glass version to this glass version field okay and this is the overridden form of details method so very simple class once again and now comes the main part so until now my code is running like this okay my phone is samsung enterprise is 10000 and this is calling the base class details method okay now i have told you various times in my previous lectures that base class object can always point to the child class object okay or derived class object so same concept i will use in here so i will use this phones object to point towards software details class so it asks me asks me name price and android version that's because in my constructor software details version is defined is like this so name price and android version so let me pass name so name is samsung the price is 10k and the android version is kitkat okay this is string so i need to remember in double quotes and then now i will call the details method okay and let's try to run this program now you can see my phone is samsung and price is 10k with android version kitkat so this same phone object is calling the software details details method okay that is the overridden version of this software details method this method it is calling the same object was calling this phones details method earlier okay so let's move back to our slides for a moment and you can see this point this very important point of first point the object of the parent class will hold object of child classes and the parent class acts differently depending on the reference of the object it is storing so this is the same concept this object is pointing to different classes at runtime okay and when it points to different classes it will act differently according to the class which is pointing so this details methods belongs to software details class this details method belongs to phone class but the object is same and it is pointing to different classes and using the different versions of those methods same concept goes with hardware details class so let's copy this and change this to hardware details okay and have the glass version as gorilla glass okay and now let's try to run this program you can see the same details method is now calling my phone is samsung the price is 10k with class as gorilla glass so this concept is called runtime polymorphism that is same object is acting differently when it is pointing to different classes and this all 
things happens at runtime we are not aware at the compile time that which method it's going to call okay therefore it is called runtime polymorphism let's move back to our slides so you can see the first point also the runtime polymorphism is achieved through overriding or virtual methods or overriding virtual or abstract methods so in our case if this phone class was an abstract class okay and this uh, method would be a abstract method we could achieve the same scenario with the help of this abstract method so for that we need to make this class as abstract we need to remove this body okay because abstract methods does not have a body so runtime polymorphism could also be achieved with the help of abstract classes also runtime poly polymorphism could also be achieved with the help of interfaces and it takes the same principle that a child class or a base class can always point towards the child class so interface reference can always point to the classes that it is implementing let's go back to our slides now another very common example of runtime polymorphism is paint so we all use paint in our daily lives so you can see if i click a rectangle in here and i just drag it it draws me a rectangle okay and if i click a circle and if i follow a same method i drag it and it draws me a circle if i click the pentagon i drag the same way and it draws me a pentagon so i am invoking the same method that is dragging it and it is drawing different shapes so this is called runtime polymorphism at runtime our shape is drawn differently and how i am doing this by pointing to different classes of these shapes okay so let's move back so these are the slides for you to note it down so this is the whole lecture of runtime polymorphism i hope you enjoyed it if you have any doubt please leave a comment below and please do subscribe to my channel thank you so very much